conservative new media viewers and Jeremy Lin fans around the world. What is going on? It's me, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We're here to talk about Lynn and Houston's 120-97 to beatdown of the Chicago Bulls today, Christmas Day 2012, in Chicago, Illinois. Now, with this win, Houston has won its fourth game in a row. They have won six of their last seven games. And you can see the team is really coming together, both in terms of their personal chemistry and what they're trying to get done on the court. They're just much more determinative, focused in what they want to accomplish. And they're just going out and doing it. And they're doing it with more confidence and more swag. It's just very good. This is going to be a difficult team to deal with going forward as long as they stay healthy because they're playing great. Houston is now 15 and 12 on the year and they scored 120 or more points for the third straight game, which is very, very impressive. Um, especially they did that against two good defensive teams. Two of the three wins were against actually all three, Philadelphia, Memphis, and Chicago. All three of those teams are good defensive teams and they put 120 on all three of them. That's amazing. Now, today we had different things going on. We certainly had Lynn Sandy, but we basically had starter sanity because all of the starters played well. Marcus Morris a little bit less well, but he played well too. Harden, Ashik, Parsons, Lynn all played great. Uh, Ashik dominated this game rebounding. I think he had 18 rebounds. He just dominated the backboards. Jeremy dominated with his passing and the assist, which we'll talk about more in a second. And James Harden also scored well and passed the ball well, too. Houston just ran Chicago into the ground. This is what they want to do. They beat them 31-8 to in fast break points. And they also crushed them in the paint, 66-32 to points in the paint for Houston. And this game wasn't particularly interesting until late in the third quarter and early in the fourth quarter, I think because that's when Chicago started to make its little run with Nate Robinson, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, now, getting to Jeremy, 20 points, one, uh, excuse me, 20 points, one rebound, 11 assists, 8 of 12 shooting, 0 of 1 from three-point range, made all four of his free throw attempts, 34 minutes, two turnovers, his plus minus was plus 33, which is just ridiculous. And he had a very good efficiency number for the game. As far as the turnovers go, only one of them was bad. One of them came, he was on the break, and he got a pass, and it's basically like the ball got stripped from him like right after he got the pass. It really wasn't his fault. He did have a turnover, I believe, in the fourth quarter that wasn't so great, but he had 11 assists. I mean, 11 assists to two turnovers. It's better than a 5-to-1 assist to turnover ratio. That's amazing. He's doing great. You can see his field goal percentage is going up. His uh, per, uh, player efficiency rating is going up. That's like a, Again, that's like all the positive stats subtracted by the negative stats per game. His assists per game are going up. His points are going up because he's shooting better. His turnover is going down. All good to see. He is steadily improving now which is what we thought would happen. Now he's kind of relaxing and settling into his role. We also found out today that the surgeon, Jeremy Lin, works on Christmas. In the second quarter, we saw something that we saw in the last game that I was so excited about. He got doubled again on a pick and roll. And he went to his left, and he put a perfect pass to Chandler Parsons for a layup. Chandler Parsons was cutting. Jeremy found him. It's like we talked about before. What are you going to do against Jeremy? You can't guard him with one guy. You can't guard him with two guys. What are you going to do? And as I said in the last video, last game video, when Jeremy's hitting three-point shots, he's going to do whatever he wants to do, pretty much, because who's going to stop him? I mean, you can't. What are you going to do to stop him then? You're going to put three guys on him? I mean, it's it's – his combination of skills is just so good, and it's just getting better and better. Now, the surgeon also put a perfect half-court pass once again to Chandler Parsons on a break, and Chandler was in traffic, and, and Chandler just got an easy scoop layup. It, I just 
I can't stress enough how difficult that is to do. Jeremy makes this stuff look easy, but it's not easy. In fact, I saw somebody try to do a similar move in one of the other games in the last couple of days, and it was a turnover. It's hard to judge all of the factors that, that go into making a successful half-court or full-court pass. And to do it in traffic, and Jeremy does it in traffic, not when he's in traffic, but the guy he's passing to is in traffic. You know, he has guys around him on the other team. To be able to get all of the variables correct, the angle, the force of the pass, the timing of the pass, the placement of the pass, that is amazing. And he does this consistently, consistently. The only other guy I can think of in the league that can do that right now, and there's probably more, is LeBron. And LeBron's huge. I mean, LeBron's 6'7", 6'8". He's taller than Jeremy and he's stronger than Jeremy. So he has an advantage in that. It's like, uh, you know, a quarterback that's 6'5", throwing a 60-yard pass versus a a quarterback that's six foot throwing a a 60-yard pass. It's a lot easier for the bigger guy. He's so good at that, Jeremy is. It's, it's, I just cannot, again, reiterate how difficult that is to do. And Jeremy does it again and again and again. It's just one of his true gifts. So good at it. Um, this was the fourth straight game of Linsanity 2.0. Jeremy's in a groove now. He's rolling. He's getting his confidence. He's getting his swag. Another thing that was really good that he did in this game was that when James Harden went checked out of the game at the end of the first quarter, and it was Tony Douglas and Jeremy in, point guard and shooting guard, Houston was able to keep scoring well. In fact, I think they, they, they at least kept the lead. They might have even gotten the lead bigger. That is critical. You don't want to have to just rely on James Harden too much. (coughs) Excuse me. You don't want to rely on James Harden too much because then James has to play too many minutes and the offense bogs down. If James Harden's the only guy that can score, that's not good. It's just that's not – you don't want that. That's an unbalanced offense and teams can then can defend you easier and stuff. And that's been a problem for, for Houston in some of their games, even the, the recent winning streak. They came up in the Memphis game a little bit, but tonight they were able to get away from that, particularly in the start of second quarter, and a lot of that had to do with Jeremy, both scoring and finding other guys to score. And I remember Kevin McHale said in training camp, we haven't been able to put everything in that we want on the offense. We haven't been able to add all the sets and the different stuff. And maybe they're adding some more things because it's it's starting to it's starting to come together better. And uh, that's really good to see. And a lot of that, like I said, it, it's up to the players. The players have to be able to get their own points when James isn't in the game. And they were able to do that tonight, particularly in that start of the second quarter. Now, another thing that Jeremy did that was good and that was smart in this game was he only shot once from three-point range, and he missed that shot. So what did he do? You either keep taking the shot when you're open or just move, move in from the shot, drive to the basket, pump fake a guy, take two dribbles in and shoot from that area instead of shooting, and Jeremy did that tonight. Basically what he's saying, I think, with that type of move is, hey, I'm not making no shots, so I'm not going to take them. But I'm not going to give the ball up. I'm just going to find a different shot, and that's good. That's the way to adjust to the circumstance. He made that adjustment, and again, he shot very well tonight, 8 of 12. Jeremy is rolling. His confidence is good. His poise is good. He's leading the offense now. And I figured this would happen, and I've said this in – in other videos. I think I actually wrote this once at at clutchfans.com. Houston's offense is going to be best when Jeremy's running it. When Jeremy has his ball, 
the ball in his hands more than James Harden does. Not because James Harden isn't good at that, but Jeremy's better at it than James is. And that's what happened in this game. Jeremy had the ball in his hands more. He had the 11 assists. Now, Harden still had six assists, but the team was comfortable with Jeremy having the ball. And that's what's going to happen. Now that Jeremy's playing better, his knee's doing better, his confidence is better, the team's cool. Yeah, you don't see James Harden demanding the ball. That's what's good about James Harden and the whole team is they're unselfish. Jeremy's the point guard. He should have the ball. He should initiate the offense. And we saw much more of that tonight. There wasn't any circumstances where the ball wasn't going to Jeremy or they were trying to, you know, keep, you know, not passing the ball or keep him out of the offensive swing. No, pretty much everything went through Jeremy tonight, including when he was going to set up James Harden for isolation plays, like when Nate Robinson was guarding James Harden. I'll give him the ball because there's no way Nate Robinson could guard him. But even Jeremy was initiating those. So that's really good. Now, the other thing I want to focus on, and this is really important, there was a a subplot going on in this game. And it took place in the third quarter, late in the fourth quarter. It was the little battle between Nate Robinson and Jeremy, primarily. But it wasn't just those guys. It was Beard got in on it and two other guys Two of the other perimeter guys got into it for Chicago. Uh, I want to say Jeremy Butler, the small forward, and Marquis Teague, the, the shooting guard. This goes back to the last game between these two teams. And I remember I said this. I'm sure I said this when, when it happened. Houston beat Chicago you know, a couple weeks ago, and it was in Houston. It was a close game. But I remember in that game, Nate Robinson was trying to punk out Jeremy Lin. I remember it clearly the same way that we talked about. I told you guys in the Memphis game, the last game that Jeremy got payback against Jared Bayless, who was one of the main people trying to punk him out the first time those teams played, along with Tony Allen. Well, Jeremy got payback against those guys again last game, and tonight he got payback against Nate Robinson. Now, Nate Robinson's a fiery dude, very competitive. He's not a tall guy, but he's really athletic. And Nate likes to talk. And and that's fine. I like Nate. I like Nate. I mean, Nate's a guy that you'd like to have on your team and you wouldn't want to play against. You know, he's a guy that can be annoying, I think, if you're playing against him. But he's fun if you're he's on your team. <laughs> well, if you saw in the third quarter of this game, Nate started getting on a roll. And he really got on a roll when Jeremy went out of the game. He wasn't doing a lot when Jeremy was guarding him. Probably only scored, I don't know, four or six points with Jeremy guarding him. But once Jeremy went out of the game, the late in the third, Nate started getting on a roll. And that's when Chicago started coming back in the game. And basically, in my opinion, Nate kind of went to the other young guys, you know, the guys that subbed in, Teague and Butler, and was like, hey, man, let's do this. You know, and I'm going to take it at Jeremy and whatever. Like I said, that's what he did in the last game. And if you remember in the last game, these two teams met. Nate Robinson scored 21 points. And he was definitely, you know, trying to punk Jeremy out. And Jeremy scored four points. And Jeremy didn't play down the stretch of the game. Tony Douglas did. And Tony Douglas did well. So what tonight was about, for a while, it didn't look like it would matter because the game was such a blowout. But then it started getting close because Nate Robinson started hitting three-pointers. And he was all pumped up and gesturing to the crowd and, you know, trying to punk Jeremy a little bit. And Jeremy answered the challenge. He really did. He had some great plays in that stretch. You saw him. He posted up Nate Robinson. Like, yeah, you know, you're going to come at me? Okay, I'm going to post you up because you're like five foot eight and I'm six foot three. And you saw it. He posted him up and he scored on him. And then somebody got fouled on the other end and those two were talking a little bit. Now, I I don't know if they were talking trash. They might have just been talking nice. You know, like, hey, how's your family doing? Merry Christmas. I have no idea. I don't know. I actually tried to see what they were saying, but I couldn't see it. Jeremy doesn't strike me as a trash talker, but Jeremy knows 
guys are going to come after him for different reasons. And we've talked about this many times. It's like a lion seeing a herd and it sees a weak animal. You see the weak animal, you're going to go after the weak animal, the lion is. Coming into this season early, before very recently, everybody wanted to go at Jeremy. Big contract, a lot of hype, and he's not playing that well. Well, now Jeremy's doing the revenge tour, and he's going back at dudes. Now, again, I don't know if Jeremy would admit this if you asked him about it. You probably wouldn't. I wouldn't if I was him because that's not – you don't have to admit that. You don't want to talk about that. But it's just something that happens on the court. And anybody that's played any type of sport where you get in individual battles, you know, cornerback versus wide receiver in American football, I don't, uh, you know, one-on-one stuff in soccer, um, certainly in basketball. This stuff can happen. You get that tension. You know You know when somebody's trying to come at you. And, again, that happened the first time these two teams played, and it happened tonight. Nate was definitely trying to come at Jeremy. Jeremy got him. He got him, and he got him good. Now, Nate did well. I'll give Nate credit. He was, you know, one of the only things that Chicago had tonight. And he really did a good job. But I think he was mad because they were getting pumped. And I'm sure he wanted to go back to the way the last game was. Even though Chicago lost, it was a good game, and Nate was going nuts, and he was holding down Jeremy Lin, and that wasn't the case tonight. But So Nate did his little thing. You know, he did his little comeback and stuff, And but like I said, Jeremy answered it tonight. He kept his calm. He had one turnover. Um, he passed the ball, I want to say, to Jeremy Butler. Got a little bit, a little out of sorts on that play. But in general, Jeremy stayed calm. But, he, you know, he took it at Nate. You saw the one time, you know, he posted him up, but he also did where he set Nate up. Nate was playing him to his left, and he just set him up, drove right by him, and hit a layup right over Carlos Boozer. So Jeremy really, again, showed that he's not going to back down. He's competitive. He has arrived as a player. So again, there's no more no more hater stuff, no more he's a fluke, he's not that good, oh, it was just one good game. No. And this was important for Jeremy to, to, to show Nate and the whole world, certainly the whole nation here in America, because these Christmas days games are huge. That's why there's no other games going on, nothing's going on. There's no American football. Everybody's watching these games. And the players know that. This is when... In the USA, Christmas is when the NBA really starts to promote itself. Until Christmas, the NBA kind of lets the the National Football League, the American Football, they kind of let them have all the the, uh, publicity. But Christmas is when the NBA really brings, you know, does the full rollout and, okay, America, here's our season, get interested. That's the reason why, in my opinion, that's why Houston was playing tonight. The NBA understands how important Jeremy Lin is, and that's why they were playing today. And, and look, if I had Jeremy Lin in, in my league and I was David Stern, I'd make sure that Jeremy Lin was playing on Christmas as well. So Jeremy showed everybody, we're not going back. We're not going back to the first game of Chicago, and you're punking me, and I'm getting benched in the fourth quarter. Nope, that's over. He got his respect today, is, is, is a way you might say it, it's slang or whatever. Jeremy made sure that he got his respect against Nate Robinson and these other people. This isn't going to be what it was last time, the same way that it wasn't for Jared Bayless or whatever. Now, there's still some, you know, there's more people to come on the revenge tour. Jose Calderon did great against Jeremy uh, in like four games ago. And, of course, General Grievous, Grievous Vasquez for New Orleans, he, he, you know, he could probably get some payback as well from Jeremy in the time to come. But I'm just very happy and impressed to see Jeremy's just, he's believing in himself more and he's standing up for himself more against these guys that are trying to come at him. And, and it was important. It was important in the game. Look, the lead was big. 
it wasn't likely Chicago was going to come back, but the team had to make a stand. So Jeremy helped do that. J- James Harden helped do that. They kind of pushed it back, and like I said, that's also a pushback on all the haters. Not, no more whatever, no more I'm not, you know, I can't play, or I'm going to get benched, or he's really not that good, and I'm going to let guys do great against me. Nope. And so that was key. That was really important. The summary here, this was a great game. It's a great game for Houston. It was a great game for Jeremy. This was one of the best games of the year, easily, easily. 20 points, 11 assists. I mean, that's it. Sure, he could have shot more, put, but he didn't need to do it. This is what he needs to do. If you're a point guard, you need to distribute the ball. There are a few guys that shoot more than they pass. I mean, somebody like a, a Russell Westbrook. Even Russell Westbrook, he passes the ball a lot. Jeremy needs to do this. And on a team with this much offensive talent, he really needs to do it. And that's what he did. And as we've talked about before, a lot of these games are going to be, for him and Lynn Sanity, going to be a, a couple fewer points than the New York Lynn Sanity 1.0 and more assist. And that's what this was. This was great. Uh, uh, again, everybody was watching this game. The players in the league watched the game. Uh, obviously, people at home on Christmas are watching the game. And, of course, people all around the world are watching the game. So it's just really good to see Jeremy and the team do well. Um, I was going to say there was something else I was going to say, and now it just totally slipped my mind. Uh, oh, yeah. I just want to say, obviously, to, to, to all the conservative New Media viewers, certainly we say Merry Christmas to all of our viewers that observe Christmas and Happy Holidays to um, – to viewers who might observe other holidays around this time of the year. Uh, I had a nice day today, just chilling out, watching the games. I got the Clippers game on right now. Uh, They're rolling. So we just wanted to say that. I know I speak for myself and and for John with that. We hope all of you guys had a very nice holiday and are having a nice holiday when you get to see this video. We will put links in the video description for video highlights and uh, game stories, etc. I'll put those down as quickly as we can. Just another great game. Enjoy it. We will talk to you again soon. Take care.